So hello church, once again we come to the Lord's table upon his invitation and just like the song says that every day when we wake up we must remember his love for us not our love for him for truly our human love is so imperfect and when we realized every day when we wake up that his love is lavished upon us at the cross for perfect love cast out all fears and that is a good start in the morning you know the I was just when I was just worshiping the Lord was just reminding me that um, the Christian walk is not focusing on what you should do but on Christ and Christ alone it is not being self-conscious trying to appease the God that demands that you are perfect because you cannot be you are only perfect in Christ and we are not here to focus on ourselves we are here to focus on Christ and Christ alone it's only when we behold his glory we are transformed from the inside out from glory to glory grace upon grace Lord I just want to thank you for this privileged that we this morning we come to your table to accept your invitation to dine at the king's table such a privileged let us get the elements ready for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me thank you Lord for this body broken for me and I am whole. thank you Lord want to thank you that truly by your stripes we are made whole and through the shedding of your blood our sins are put away forever it is not that we are worthy but because you are worthy Lord that you give us that gift of righteousness through your total cleansing through your blood in the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me church let us drink this together and give thanks Now we come to the um, tithe and offering. I thank you, Lord, that you are a source, eternal source of supply. Though the Lord demands grace supply, and you supply all our needs according to your riches in glory we are a blessed people so that we can bless others I thank you Lord that for what we have that we give to you that you multiply it 
and let the overflow reach out to those around you, around us. Thank you, Lord. And for those of you who are giving online, all the details will be stated below. I thank you, Lord, truly, for this privilege. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. The Siamese says, um, I was glad when they say unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. So this morning, welcome to the house of the Lord. Amen. Uh, it's good to have you all of you here uh, this morning. Praise the Lord. Um, I just want to make some um, announcement on the baptism. I think we'll probably do it uh, after the Gawai holidays. Um, and quite a lot of people were asking me uh, whether they can baptize their children. Okay, and what I think I think what we will do is this: we will uh, allow your children to be baptized, but we won't give them a certificate, right? Unlike, unlike the adults, because uh, later on in their life they will want to be baptized, because um, baptism is an important part of our Christian faith um, to declare our. Uh, what is inside us, all right? So, but I know some parents would like to dedicate their children, baptize their children. So, uh, we will allow that, but um, uh, so there will not be a certificate for them, unlike the adults, all right? So, um, that, that's what we will do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, let me tell you a story first before we start. <laughs> um, a long time ago, a while ago, uh, this is true, eh? I was in. I had the privilege of um, going to the to be in England for six and a half weeks. All right, and it was one of my um, most memorable moments. Um, so I remember going to um, uh, to visit some of the cathedrals, you know, the the big large churches, and um, I think it was West, Westminster Abbey. Uh, when I was there, and um, the thing that sh that was shocking to me was inside the church, right? They buried some people there <laughs> because the cathedral was really big, huge, right? Uh, I think Jack also know that. Um, so I don't know they are heroes or saints or what. Uh, so they say here lies who who who, uh, and on the wall there will be a plaque on uh, who's there, all right? So the story goes like this. Um, so a group of a uh, tourist was vis visiting a cathedral and so the, the pastor, the priest was uh, leading the tour and said, oh, here, here lies um, the heroes who die in the service, right? So actually he means service of the country, lah, all right? So a little boy put up his hand and asked him, uh, which service did they die? First service or second service? Okay, none, <laughs> praise the <Lord. laughs> None of you will die in this service, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, pres <laughs> I want to share one verse before we go into what I want to share this morning. One verse that we saw last Sunday, uh, when, I was, when I went home and meditated on it again, uh, it, it speaks to me. 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. It's easy to remember. 2.2.2. 2, 2. It says, And the things that, that, you, that you have heard from me, among many weaknesses, commit the same to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Okay, um, and we know the story of Timothy. Paul says to Timothy, it's because that you listen to the words of your grandmother who taught you it, that those words were able, were able to make you, make you wise for salvation. Right? So the, little, the, the words that we teach our children in the, in the Sunday school, in our children's church, um, we will benefit them in the future, all right? So uh, I was just thinking about this because I remember and it, when I was young, right, when I, I received Christ when I was nine years old, um, then um, my father also received a lot, uh, a bit later. And what happened is this, that his good friend, his best friend, who uh, incidentally was my school principal, uh, would every Friday night come to the house and do Bible study with him. Right, for I think a number of years, two or three years, without fail every Friday. And um, so I was asked to join them. So being nine years old, I didn't really like the time, right? Studying Bible, uh, you feel a bit bored. Uh, but every Friday night, I, I spent time doing Bible study with two, these two persons, all right? And he was so faithful. Uh, it was just two persons every Friday night doing Bible study. And I think those time that I spent um, 
you know, do Bible study with them, make me wise for salvation. All right, make, was able to maybe uh, it's because of that. Uh, maybe I'm a pastor today. All right, so um, the things that you share with people, you entrust to people, um, it will benefit them. Okay, so press Lord, and I, I thought, and actually, I, I think two years ago, I saw him. Um, the, the person who led my father to the Lord and do the Bible study, he was in the church opposite us, at the SIB church there, right? And I was happy to see him. Uh, so, so this is the verse I want to impart to you, and uh, you just meant to tell you chill upon it. Amen. Press Lord. So this morning, um, I want to share something that uh, I think is exciting. It's about the our end time church, the end time uh, generation, right? The Church of Jesus Christ. All right. Saying, so um, looking at. Just uh, see where God is leading us um, in these days, right? Praise the Lord. So let's begin. Let's look at Colossians 1 verse 18. And he, right, that's Jesus Christ, is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that he may be preeminent in all things. All right, praise the Lord. So uh, let me share this with you. Right? Contrary to some popular belief, uh, what people believe, the church, right, the church is not a building, <laughs> okay? The church is not a building. The church is you and I, amen? That's why for two, two maybe two and a half years, uh, even though we could not meet together, the church still exists, right? Even though it was online, okay? It, um, so on Sunday, we come to a place like this. We, this is the house of the Lord, right? So, um, that's the exciting thing, right? That's why when, I think sometimes when uh, I think sometimes when Lydia leads, she says, uh, "Church will come to church." All right. So uh, very, we 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 are, and the other thing is this: He is the head of the body. So we are the body of Christ. Okay, and we know also that um, your body does cannot exist without the head, right? Is that true? Amen. Um, when you wake up this morning. Uh, when, your ch- when your head decides to come here to Grace Unlimited, your body cannot say, I, I can't go, I don't go, right? Uh, because we are linked to the head, right? So the Bible says he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, uh, which means, firstborn from the dead means we are also uh, in that category, okay? Because Jesus rose from the dead, we are also walking now today in resurrection life. And someday we will have a new body, uh, because of what Jesus has done, amen? So he is the head, and uh, because the Bible also says, as he is, so are we in this world, amen? And because what the head is, so, um, we also have the same, uh, uh, some, same properties and same uh, characteristics, amen? Praise God. Let's look at another verse from Ephesians. Hallelujah, praise God. So Jesus, the head of the church, and then this verse is also very clear. These verses are very clear also from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 to verse 23. It says, which he worked in Christ in raising him from the dead, and he seated him at his right hand in the heavenly. That's why Jesus is today, seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Praise God. And uh, in the spirits, in we are also seated at the right hand of God. Right? Because as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Praise God. This is where I want to show you. Far above all principality and authority and power and dominion and every name being named, not only in this world, but also in the coming age. Praise God. So Jesus above uh, powers and principalities, whether they are earthly powers or earthly dominions or spiritual power or spiritual dominions. Praise God, right? So, um, as, I, as I always tell you, we, have, we are never afraid of ghosts and vampires and zombies and those things, amen? Because Jesus is above all uh, principalities and powers. We are not afraid of ghosts or evil spirits because they have been defeated by Jesus on the cross, amen? And then he says, and he has put all things can you see all things? Put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Hallelujah. Praise God, right? Which is his body, the fullness of him, uh, fullness of him who fills all in all. Praise God. Uh, I, I think this is very, very powerful uh, verses here. Amen. So as Jesus is reigning, so as the body of Christ, as the church, we are also to reign uh, over everything. Praise God, right? So if you're facing any things in your life, any problems, any uh, situations in your life, 
press the Lord because God has God has put Jesus above your, your problems, above your circumstance. Uh, and so we are never under the circumstances. We are to live above the circumstances because of what Jesus has done. And um, press on. If Jesus is reigning, are you reigning? Amen. Right? So if Jesus is victorious, are you victorious? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God, right? So uh, we are not concerned about anything in, in our life, right? Because of what Jesus has done, right? Can you see that everything is put under his feet and then God put uh, all those things um, to us, right? As a church, as the body of Christ, the fullness of him, right? The fullness of God, right? Can now press God? And we know that to receive the fullness of God is to meditate. When we meditate on his love, when we receive his love, all right? And we'll see his, the fullness of God manifest in our life. Hallelujah, press God. So, Hey, actually, the Church of Jesus Christ um, is not actually where God wants her to be, all right? Because um, we would, we for a long time we don't have the revelation of who we are, amen. Praise God! But I want to bring you to a place where we see ourselves as God sees us, all right? Um, praise God! And then a few more verses, and then before I show you something else, all right? Praise God! Hallelujah. Look at Ephesians 5. Just now was Ephesians 1, but I look at verse, verse, chapter 5 onwards. It says, That he may present it to himself as the glorious church. Well, I highlight for you to see. We come back to that. Without spot or wrinkle or any such things, that it should be holy and without blemish. Right? And then uh, jump 1 verse, verse 29. For no man even yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it even as the Lord loves the church, right? Here in Ephesians 5, God is talking about husband and wife, but he used the church as an example, right? And But we're looking at um, uh, the verses on the church only, right? But uh, if you're married, look at these verses, amen? Praise God. For it says, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bond, all right? So we are uh, like uh, intricately linked to Jesus, amen? And uh, we are not separated from Jesus. Oh, Jesus is one part. We are one part, right? Just like your head is joined to your body, right? Amen? Uh, you're, you are one, amen? So you and Jesus are one. Press God, right? So uh, what I want to show you is verse 27, and I was just uh, chill about this, meditating on this, right? It says we are the glorious church without spot or wrinkle or such things that uh, it should be holy and without blemish and uh, sometimes we think hey uh, there's no perfect church on earth how how is it that the bible says we are a glorious church without spot and wrinkle all right and this is how god sees us um, in the father's eyes the other verse the other phrase or god how god described the church is that we are the bride of christ Right? And uh, Jesus, the bridegroom, he's the coming bridegroom. And what I want you to see is this um, that we are coming to an edge where the glory of the Lord will be coming, will be seen upon the upon the church. All right. And I believe it's this, right? Why are, what are we different from previous generation, previous uh, age of the church? Is this right? For and for the first time, the body of Christ, the church. Um, is beginning to see herself uh, as without spot or wrinkle. When we understand uh, the righteousness of God, when we understand the grace of God, right? For the first time in our life, uh, the, the bride of Christ sees herself as the Lord sees her. Amen? Because uh, your husband may always see you, see you as beautiful, but you yourself don't see yourself, oh, I'm always, I'm imperfect here, you know, I don't look good here. But for the first time in, in church history, uh, the church began to see themselves as being holy, as without blemish. Are you, gonna, are you able to see this? Amen? Uh, this is what I will, a way I want to bring you to see so that we agree with God, we stand with what God, how God sees us, and, uh, and I believe it's when we have this revelation, the glory of the Lord will be seen upon the church. All right? Praise God. Amen. So I want to show you this. Uh, actually, I want, to, I want to do this at the beginning of the service. And when I was preparing this, actually, a lot of things I could have shared, I could spend the whole service here. But I want to show you a bit of the history of the church, right? The history of uh, the body of Christ. Amen. And it's very, very, very interesting. Um, but 
this is my timeline. This is my, uh, this is what I compose, right? This, I, I don't get it from any anywhere else, right? I don't copy from somebody else. So, but um, you might be able to add to this. Press lot. But this is timeline. I believe the timeline of the church. So let's let's begin, right? Press lot. So the body of Christ, the church. How do you? How many of you know this? When was the church born? Thirty-three A.D. Right on the day of Pentecost. Right. We have just celebrated Easter. Uh, we have just celebrated Easter. And when is Pentecost? 50 days, right? After Easter. So it will be around, I think, Sunday, June the 8th will be Pentecost Sunday, right? With Pentecost Sunday. Right? So the church is uh, was born. Remember when the, uh, the 120 uh, dis, uh, disciples met on the upper room and God poured out His Spirit upon the church. Amen. And... Um, they, they, they spoke in tongues, right? The church was born 33 AD, right? 33 AD. Um, so we fast forward, and um, of course, there are a lot of things happen, happen like uh, 70 AD and all those things, but um, we don't have time to look at every, um, you know, every edge of the church. But we know that uh, from 430 AD, uh, 1000, 1000 AD, it was the dark ages of the church, right? Where the word of God wasn't taught. And uh, you know it was uh, because through the lords and um, the the church uh, was based on the tradition of man. Uh, the, you know what I mean, right? So during that age, I think it was the age of the uh, Roman Catholic, right? So um, it was in a sense the dark ages of the church, right? But um, in 1455 AD, uh, that was uh, for the first time. The Bible was printed, called the Gutenberg Bible, right? The Gutenberg, Gutenberg Bible. Uh, so the first printing, 48, 48 copies was printed, all right? And what happened is this, for the first time, uh, lay people, which is like you and I, uh, has access to the Word of God, right? For uh, in the past, nobody has access to the Word of God except uh, those, uh, the leaders of the church, okay? And that, and that was a problem, right? Because the Word of God is for every one of us. Right, so in, uh, in 1455 AD, Gothenburg Bible was formed. Right? And then 1517 AD, uh, Martin Luther and the Re Reformation. Right? A German monk, uh, one day had a revelation. Right? The just shall live by faith. Right? Because uh, in the Dark Ages, it's always works. And man is always work. What you do to please God, what you don't do, uh, would displease a lot, right? So it's an Old Testament, Old Testament, Old Covenant mentality, right? But this man, uh, did, uh, by the name of Martin Luther, we know him, and um, so he had a revelation one day that uh, the church shall live by faith, right? So uh, 1780, then uh, 1529, the Church of England was formed, right? The Church of England, 1520, or oh, we call them Anglicans, right? Uh, by the way, that's my root, right? Uh, I grew up in the Anglican Church, right? Um, so, Martin Luther, uh, the Church of England, uh, in America, they call Episcopalians, right? Episcopalians uh, uh, in America. But in, uh, generally, in the world, uh, in the, in worldwide, uh, it's the Church of England, right? So, uh, Anglicans, right? But we see, right? I'll show you this because... Uh, this is how all the denominations are formed, right? And then 1729, uh, the Methodist Church was formed, right? Uh, there was a man, his name was uh, J called John Wesley, and um, um, he wanted to, to transform the church, the Anglican Church from within, right? And uh, what, he, what, he, what he thought was a personal relationship with God, all right? So he, this is what he wanted uh, to see change in the Anglican Church, right? So he's been teaching that uh, his ministry. Uh, most, some of you know he, they wrote a lot of hymns. John and Charles Wesley um, wrote a lot of good hymns. Some things, some of the hymns we still sing today, right? For example, "Hark the Herald Angels Sing," right? It's, uh, it's written by uh, John Wesley, right? So, um, so he wanted to do that for him. He taught the word of God uh, to the people in the Anglican Church, right? But when he passed away. Um, the de denomination was formed. The Methodist Church was formed in uh, 1729, right? So, um, are you with me? Is this interesting or is this boring for you? <laughs> I think it's quite interesting, right, to, to, to see that. And then uh, 1845 uh, AD, the Baptist Church was formed. Right? Through a 
uh, not just one person, a few people, it, it becomes like a um, it become like a movement, right? There's a man called John Smith uh, in Holland, uh, in America, uh, England also, uh, and they form and they become the Baptist Church, right? Uh, contrary to popular belief, the Baptist Church uh, was not formed by John the Baptist. Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> but uh, if you know, uh, if you if you if you know about the Baptist today, they are not. One, one denomination, actually from the Baptist itself, there are many, many denominations, right? Some of you know the more common ones like the Southern Baptist, right? You heard about them. Um, Prescott. Um, of some, some of my, some of my Baptist, one of my Baptist friends, uh, they said there are so many types of, so many types of Baptist, you can categorize them, right? Uh, they are called A Baptist, Land Baptist, C Baptist. That's a joke, right? Uh, but there are many, many denominations of Baptists uh, in the world, okay? Praise God. Uh, let's, let me show you some more, right? Um, so we skip, right? Uh, of course, in between, you find things like uh, the Evangelical Church, right? SIB is an Evangelical Church. People like um, Hudson Taylor um, and people who, who taught the Word of God, right? And, and so that uh, there's an evangelical movement. But uh, we move forward, 1906, 1906 AD, um, Azusa Street uh, is where uh, the Pentecostal movement began, right? And if you, there are books written on Azusa Street, and very interesting, interesting reading. Uh, if you have, if you can find those books, uh, if you want to read about them, I can borrow you some books on Azusa Street. Uh, it's where, in a sense, it's not, it's not, Pentecost all over again is actually God restoring the gift of the spirit specs to the church. Okay, and uh, so it began in Azusa Street, and in 1906 AD, and you find things like uh, the Big Tens movements, um, the healing ev evangelists. Um, you know, it, it spread like wildfire all over the world, uh, especially in America. Uh, so it, it was the starting of the Pentecostal church, okay? Um, so God was restored. Can you see that God was just restoring things, things that were lost in the dark ages, uh, but God took time over decades, over years, to restore truths back to the body of Christ, okay? Um, and we come, and then in 1958, in a sense, uh, not by one person, um, that was, they say, the start of the charismatic renewal, all right, the 1958. And then uh, those of us who grew up in church in the 1970s, in the 80s, um, in the early 80s, it was the time of the charismatic movement, all right? So you find things, people like, uh, leaders like Catherine Kuhlman, uh, Benny Hinn, um, and, and some of these leaders, all right? And uh, most of us, right, or not all of us, some of us, we, when we grew up in church, I, I grew up in church during that movement, uh, where you know we see signs and wonders in the church, healing being restored in the in the church, right? The gift of the spirits for the first time, uh, speaking in tongues uh, was not something strange in the body of Christ in the church. Okay, so the gift of the spirits being restored to the body of Christ, amen. And then uh, 1980s um, onwards, any people like Kenneth E. Higgins, uh, Oral Roberts. Um, kind of Copeland, they started the things called the Word of Faith movement, right? Where uh, restoration of believing the whole Bible or the full gospel of Jesus Christ, not just certain parts of it, but the whole Bible. Amen. Believing that healing is yours, prosperity is yours, um, and all, all these truths, right? And, and uh, very blessed, right? And uh, so and when I was in school, um, you know, uh, some of these books really helped me to see. Uh, who am I in Christ, our inheritance in Christ, amen? So people like uh, Kenneth E. Higgins was instrumental, right? And they're still around today, uh, right? And some of the teachings like Kenneth Copeland uh, is still alive and still teaching the Word of God, amen? And uh, praise God, so some of this, I encourage you to read some of these things, all right? Praise God. Um, and this is my, right? My, I believe 1999, 1998, also very instrumental uh, for the body of Christ for the church. We call it the Grass Revolution Movement, all right? The Grass Revolution. Uh, people like uh, Pastor Joseph Prince, uh, Andrew Womack, uh, some of these uh, grass teachers, right? Begin to teach the body of Christ uh, what, is, uh, what is a new covenant truth. I mean, that is the grace of God, right? I think uh, for me, right? 
uh, I, I first heard the grass message, in, grass message or the grass re revolution message in 2001, all right? And at that time, uh, I was a burnout Christian. I was totally, uh, you know, um, like quit ministry, gave up on everything already because I have been a Christian for a long time and nobody ever taught me that I'm the righteousness of God. I've been always thinking I've fallen short of His glory, right? No matter how much I've done, no matter, um, you know, I feel that I've not, not been able to reach the God standard, amen? Not knowing that God has put us in Christ and that because we are in Christ, we are forever His beloved, forever blessed, right? So I, I believe it's a, real, it's a movement, right? 1999, uh, the grass revolution movement, amen? That has blessed us and to this day, uh, we are still blessed by this, amen? And then in uh, 2013 AD, uh, Grace Unlimited was born, all right? Grace Unlimited was born, amen? I think that's a movement by <laughs> praise God. Of course, uh, I'm biased. I put it here in our list, amen? But um, praise God, um, we started our church in 3rd November, 2013, all right? Praise God. Uh, but before that, for one month, we were, we were meeting in Ming, Ming Sing's house. Uh, and then two, and in 3rd November, God gave us a bless. Um, and for a few years, we met at ST3, right? Uh, at the Cedar Lines at SD3 for a number of years. And then was it 2017 or 18? We, we came here, right? Uh, in December, we were here. All right, so th that is the timeline of the church. But I want to show you 2022 AD, after the church has come out from a worldwide pandemic, after two years of not being able to meet, I believe this era, this time, this dispensation is the time uh, of the glorious Church of Jesus Christ. We are coming to the most exciting era in the history of the church, all right? Because as I said earlier, for the first time, the bride of Christ, the body of Christ begin to see herself as un un uh, unblemished, as holy, as lovely, right? As the Lord sees us. I believe also as we behold Jesus more, uh, we have two years, right? Of feeding online, uh, taking time, uh, spending time with the Lord because we cannot go to the cinema, we cannot go to the gym, we cannot meet our friends, amen? But I don't know about you, uh, I, do, I do in these two years spend more time with the Lord, right? Is that true? Amen? Of beholding Jesus. And I, I find that uh, as we behold Him, as we look at Him, and uh, spending hours and hours listening to the online services, right? I could have, I, uh, I went to many church service on Sunday. I mean, I could be in Hillsong, in NCC, uh, in the online service. I mean, feeding, 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 um, praise God. And this is how we are transformed by looking at Jesus, amen? As we look at Jesus, His glory become our glory, amen? And um, praise God. So this, this is where I want, I want to show you, um, praise God, of course, uh, you can add on uh, uh, to my list here, uh, uh, but um, I, I believe we are on a journey uh, and we are at a place where it, it's the most crucial time, the most important time, right? Um, where many people will, will come to the Lord. You say nothing is happening yet, uh, nothing seems to be happening, but praise God, something is happening, amen? God is doing something and uh, praise God. I believe, right? I believe. Uh, this year will be a year of restoration for the church, for the body of Christ. Amen, praise God. So you're saying, what, how come, Lord God, you allow all this denomination, right? How come you, uh, why is it that all these different, uh, you know, in throughout the timeline, different, uh, you know, different denomination, different groups of people, why, why is it that it seems that the church is divided, right? But I, I really believe that, um, you know, God allowed it to happen, uh, and we we don't look down on other churches. We don't we find common grounds to with other believers and Christians where we fellowship. Uh, but praise God for that. Amen. Praise God. I want to show you one verse, right? Uh, from Luke five, verse thirty-seven. Jesus says this, right? He says, he says, and no one put new wine into old wine skin, else the new wine will burst the wine skins and be spilled 
and the white skin will perish, but new wine must be put into new wine skin, and both are preserved together. Okay, uh, I, I see that the wine skin here as the structure in the church. Okay, and sometimes when God does a new thing, uh, it is easier for God to uh, create a new new structure for the new wine. Okay, or else the, the new wine put into old white skin, the old white skin will burst. Or old white put into new white skin, uh, it will not be able to, 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 uh, to be content there. Amen? And that's why there are many, many denominations, because God was restoring things, God was doing new things. Okay? Okay? But uh, we, we praise God that even though uh, that's happening, that has happened, we are still one church, one body, right? Not many bodies, but we are one body in Christ, okay? Even though there's many denominations, uh, praise God. So some people ask me, what denomination are we? <laughs> what denomination are you? And you get that? When you go out and tell people that you're from Grace Unmeted, they ask you what denomination. Actually, we are everything, you know? People say, uh, if you are Catholic, we are Catholic because we belong to the universal church. Are you Baptist? We are also Baptist because we baptize by immersion of water. Uh, we are also Presbyterians because we have uh, uh, we have many leaders. Okay, so we are also Presbyterian. We are charismatic. We are Pentecostal. Okay, get it. So, but actually, if you ask, actually, the right answer, if you people ask you like, to be uh, technically correct, correct, right? We are non-denominational. Right? We are non-denominational. Okay, if you want to be uh, correct, are you with me? <laughs> okay, uh, but we are part of the body of Christ. Hallelujah, praise God. Uh, are you saying this so far? Okay, are you with me? I don't do it some way and then. <laughs> so uh, I know I'm doing something a bit different today, uh, but praise God, right? So God is building His church uh, together. I've said. I shared, I think, two Sundays ago that um, when this gospel of Jesus Christ is preached to all the world, that when every tribe and nation has heard this good news, the end will come, right? And out of the uh, 16,500 tribes worldwide, uh, only about 389 tribes have not heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we are very, very close to closure, to bring in... Uh, Fulfillment to the great commission of Jesus Christ, right? Uh, Matthew 28, verse 20. Amen. So we are living in an exciting time. That's why I believe, I believe with all my heart that we will see an influx, influx of people coming to the body of Christ, to the church, right? That many people will, uh, hallelujah, as we lift up Jesus, like Jesus in Peter's boat, the fish will come to the boat, all right? Our part is to lift up Christ, is to lift up Jesus. And the more we are able to lift up Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus will draw all men to himself. Amen? Press God, right? So, um, in Matthew 16, verse 18, right? Uh, Jesus says this to Peter, and I, sa I also say to you that you are Peter, and on the rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, right? So, Jesus says to Peter, uh, on this rock, I will build my church. Some people think that, hey, uh, God is going to build, build, Jesus is going to build his church on, on Peter, right? And so Peter was the first pop. Uh, actually, it's not true. Um, this verse is what Peter confessed uh, earlier, right? What, what Jesus, what Peter confessed in the same chapter is this, you are the Christ, right? You are the Christ. And, uh, and because he confessed that and he had a revelation of who Jesus is. Amen. God says, upon this revelation, God says, I will build my church. Amen. Hallelujah. And so this is why we want to uh, 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 lift up Christ in, in our church. Right? So the other verse that I want to show you is this. It says, uh, therefore take heed to yourself and to all the flocks in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, right, to feed that's the word bishop, uh, overseers, uh, to fit the, the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. Amen? Praise God. Uh, and that's why we, we, when you come here on Sunday, we're actually feeding you. Amen? 
you are the church of God, you are the body of Christ. Even you are not with us uh, physically, you're watching online, uh, you're feeding on, uh, we are actually feeding you, okay? Because you are very, very important and we need to feed, we need to eat. And this is how we grow uh, as, as, as a church. Amen? Praise God. Uh, can you see also, I highlight for you see, that the body of Christ, the church, is, is the one that Jesus had bought, purchased with his own blood. Right, that's why you are very important because uh, you are redeemed not with silver or gold, or gold but with the precious blood of the Lamb. Right? So you are really worth a lot, much more than all the money, all the gold in this universe. Uh, you're some, somebody. The body of Christ, the church, is priceless, as, as I say, as I, as I might say, right? So, hallelujah. Praise God. So we want to feed you, and I pray that, uh, I, I believe that uh, you are being fed not only here on Sunday, but throughout the week you are feeding, you are, you are receiving. Uh, hallelujah, praise Lord. Let me show you this. This is why I believe and, uh, that we are living in the most uh, crucial time, the most exciting time in the history of the church, right? Uh, it, from Hebrews 12, verse 22, it says, But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly, can you see that? Right, so it's uh, a church of the firstborn who are written in heaven. Hallelujah. Can you see earlier? Earlier, Jesus is the, uh, he's the, he's the firstborn, right? And uh, praise God, as we also are the church of the firstborn uh, who are written in heaven, in heaven. Your name is already in heaven. Do you know that? That's why you cannot lose your salvation because your name is already in the book of life. Uh, hallelujah, praise God. And nobody can erase your name from the book of life. Hallelujah, um, praise God. So it doesn't mean that uh, because you come to church, you are safe, right? Each one of us, we need to receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, right? But be, you being here, uh, the body of Christ, right? And it says, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirit of just man made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Right? Praise God. So the body of Christ, the church, uh, is the church of the new covenant. Praise God. Not of the old covenant. Right? So the new covenant says, uh, hey, I, I need you, I depend on you, I cannot do things on my own, right? Because the old covenant says, if you do this, you will be blessed. If you don't do this, you will be blessed, right? So every time we, we come together, in fact, every time you take communion, you are saying to the Lord, Lord, uh, I cannot, right? I cannot receive this healing on my own. I cannot uh, prosper on my own. I cannot, uh, you know, handle my family on my own. All these things on my own, I need you. And in this new covenant, uh, we depend on Him. Right? That's why every time we take communion, the communion is to help us remember that Jesus, you are my source, you are my, my rock, right? you are the one that I lean on, um, you're the most important person in my life. Right? I, I need you, I depend on you, and praise God. Right? And this is how you, are, you can become successful in life, because we are not doing things with our own wisdom, with our own, inter, uh, with our own scheme and intellect, with our own plans, but we, uh, as a church, we depend on you, Jesus Christ. Amen, praise God. That's why uh, if, you are, if there are things in your body that cannot be healed by natural means, Jesus can heal you. Amen, praise God. Right? If there are things in your life that uh, the problems are too big, praise God. Here is, here is the one, right, who is the mediator of the new covenant, right? And he is the head of the church, right? And we are his body, right? Praise God. And so we depend on Him. Uh, we lean on Him. Praise God. And, and so when we come together, uh, praise God, we, 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 can you see that in uh, verse 22, the angels are here with us on Sunday. Hallelujah. Praise God. There are more people here every Sunday than you and I realize. Right? There are not enough seats uh, on Sunday for the congregation here. Praise God. Even though the angels do not need seats. All right? Uh, but, we, we are in that place where when we come together, um, as we gather, right? We, um, he works among us, he moves among us, praise God. I believe, right? I declare uh, that when we come together, healing will manifest 
Your breakthrough will happen while we, we come together like this. Amen. I believe when we do when uh, we'll see more and more of his glory in his church. Right? It's his church. And we are coming to a place where it's the glorious church of Jesus Christ. All right. If you think the days of the Acts of the Apostle uh, was glorious, when the church was born was glorious, you ha- you end seen nothing yet. You have not seen anything yet. I'm excited that we are living in such a time as this. Amen. Right? In 2022, even though we have come through a difficult time, even though we have come through a time where the, the, the enemy tried to stop us. I like the song we sang this morning, right? What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it for our for our good, for our good. Amen? Praise God, right? What the enemy tried to do, he always lose, right? Whenever, uh, whenever, you hit the, whenever you read the history of the church, whenever the church, when the devil attacks the church, the church always grow up, will grow stronger. For example, when, uh, when the church in China was persecuted, it booms, right? It grows. Uh, it's the same in the book of Acts, when the enemy attacks the church. The church grow, right? So we have come through a period where the church was being attacked for two years, all right, and we could not assemble, right? The, because an enemy knows uh, the word of God, also, right? As we see the day approaching, let us not forsake the assembling, right? And uh, so the enemy tried to f- stop the assembling, not knowing that uh, we don't need a building, right? We actually we are the body of Christ, amen. And um, uh, even though we meet online for two years, it's not. Uh, not convenient, it's not, uh, it's sad also sometimes not be able to see some of you, right? But we're coming pl- up to a place where there'll be a restoration, right? But be patient, right? Because people are still coming back, people are co- still finding their place. Uh, all over the world, the church is coming back together, all right? And uh, it may take months, uh, but we'll, we'll come to a place where uh, uh, the church will be more glorious than before the day uh, of the pandemic. Amen. Praise God, right? Hallelujah. So let's look at a few more verses be- before we close. Hallelujah. Uh, this is a verse that I quote this morning uh, at the start of this service. Uh, and David says, right, Psalms 1, 2, 2, verse 1, a song of decrees of David. I was glad when they said to me, let us go uh, unto the house of the Lord, right? So the church, right, is not a building, but this is the closest thing. This is the closest thing to the house of God. Amen. And, uh, and so uh, I'm excited every Sunday when people say, hey, let's come together for, to worship the Lord together, to sing together, right? Uh, so this is the house of the Lord and we want to build his house. Like David has a, uh, has a heart to build the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So we also have a heart to build the house of the Lord. And it's that when, when, when people come together, we, uh, uh, in his house, uh, something happened, right? And, and, and we, we, we want to feed the body of Christ. So when we come together, what do we do whenever we come together? Right? And I was, I was reminded of this. Uh, this whole week, I was reminded of this verse. So let me share this verse with you. Whenever we come together, it, from Acts 2, it says, and they were continuing steadfastly in the teaching of the apostle, that is the word of God, the word of Christ, and to f- fellowship, right? And the breaking of bread, and the prayers, right? The prayers there uh, could also mean tongues, uh, speaking in tongues, because it says the prayer, right? So, uh, but also means you pray for one, pray for one another also, because the prayers, all right? So, uh, I want to remind you all of you. So, this, this, these four things are very important for us, okay? That when we come together, the word of God, uh, fellowship, that is sharing. Uh, Hallelujah. The breaking of bread, there's communion and uh, prayer, right? And, the, and prayer. And that includes worship in it. Right? So these, these four things, uh, we, I will, we want to emphasize on these things uh, whenever we come together. Whether it's in a small group or in a big group, uh, praise God. I have, some things, I, have some, I have some things that have dropped in my heart, but uh, I want to present to the leaders first. Uh, tonight we will, be, to, we will meet and uh, then I will present to all of you, all right? Because I believe that uh, you know, the things that we did before, uh, God wants to bring in new things to the body of Christ, to us here in Chiyu. Amen? So, uh, we, but um, once, once, the, once the leaders, can, all the leaders can see it, then I will present to all of you. Right? Uh, I believe in, uh, 
hey, uh, I want to restore some times of, you know, makan together. Amen. It's a long time since we eat together. Uh, things like this, right? Things like this where we fellowship together. Um, hey, are you excited about that? To eat together again? <laughs> Amen. Remember when we used to eat together every Sunday, right? But uh, we have not done that for a long time. So I guess we meet there. I miss, miss some of your cooking, all right? I miss your curries. Hallelujah. Praise God, right? Um, Amen. Praise God. Um, but in closing, let me show you this, right? How do we build the church? How we build the house, house of the Lord, right? How do we build the house of the Lord? Um, praise God. And uh, I, I pray that you see this, and you, you, each one of you, uh, we have also revelation, right? So you can incorporate this into your ministries, into your, uh, into your groups or so. One Corinthians three verse nine say, uh, say this, right? For of God we are, we are fellow workers. A few of God, you are a building of God. Can you see that? I highlight for you to see. That's why the Bible says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? Individually, uh, you are the dwelling of God also. Amen. God dwells in you. He does not live in a temple. Uh, when we say in the house of God, uh, God does not live here, right? <laughs> He's not here like in the Old Testament, uh, the presence of God. But whenever two, Jesus says, when two or three gathers in my name, there he is in the midst of us, right? So when we come together, he is with us. Hallelujah, praise God, right? Then uh, verse, th verse 10, according to the grace of God, which is given to me, and uh, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. And let every man be careful how he builds on it, right? So God says, you and I, we are the wise master builder, right? We build together. Uh, for for an any other foundation uh, can no one lay than the one being led, uh, who is Jesus Christ. Of course, uh, Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. We build on Him. Amen. Praise God. Um, hallelujah. But let me show you this. Let's look at the other verse, right? Verse 12. Uh, this, is a, this is quite a key verse. For if anyone builds on this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, Hey, stubble, each one's work will be revealed. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by the fire, and the fire shall try each one's work as to what kind it is. Right? So, uh, in a sense, here are all our ministries, what we do for the Lord, uh, what foundation do we build on, right? I was just uh, remember when I was reading this, I remember the story of the three little pigs, okay? Uh, my niece, Chloe, uh, she's in Sunday school now. She can tell you the story of the three little pigs, right? right? The, first, the first pig built his house with hay. The, uh, okay. And uh, the other one built with wood and with stone, right? So the only one remains, okay? So if you read this verse, uh, what do you think, whose house will remain well, with what building materials? And I'm sure you realize, right? that the, the house that will remain will be built with gold, silver, and precious stone, right? Praise God. And they also all speaks of Jesus Christ, right? Precious stone, precious stone speaks of all the beauties of Jesus Christ. Uh, silver speaks of the redemption of Jesus Christ. And gold speaks of the divinity of Jesus Christ, amen? So when, uh, so when we build the church, we build on all these things about Him, amen? Right, we speak about His... Uh, all his beauties, all his redemptive work, um, and all that, uh, all his divinity, what he, who he is, in, who he is, amen. And so, when we build on the foundation of these things, okay, praise God. He says, "This is not, uh, uh, this is not that you will lose your salvation." Okay, these verses is not about you losing your salvation. These verses is about what we do for the Lord, amen, and. So the things that we do for the Lord is must be built on Jesus Christ. That's why as a church, uh, we don't want to uh, depend too much on uh, different, different gimmicks to build the church. We want to build it on Christ and Christ the Lord. Amen? And these are the things that will remain. That's why you, sometimes you hear of big ministries, big things, and it breaks my heart uh, when, you, when you hear stories or news about big ministries that suddenly disappear or suddenly get in trouble. Uh, many times it's because it's not built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. 
right? It's built on different things, uh, different gimmicks or worldly things. Amen. So we don't want to build on wood, hay, or stubble. We want we want to build on uh, Christ alone, right? Um, as the earlier verses has uh, said, right? So if anyone's work work which he builds remain, he shall receive a reward. Amen. Praise God. So uh, Gio, uh we want to build our foundation of Jesus Christ. Amen. We we want to do the things that will last, uh, that will stand, right? So when the big bad wolf comes. Uh, all right, event our house will will stand, amen. That is because uh, it's, it's built on Jesus Christ and His finished work. You get it, amen. Praise God. So um, I pray that uh, what I share this morning, you are able to see or uh, be comprehend. We, uh, as I said earlier, uh, throughout these these few few weeks, right, we want to build the house of the Lord together, amen. And uh, we will come together uh, as one body, as one church, uh, as the 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 head directs us, amen. We will follow his uh, his plan, his will, his directions, um, so that his glory will be seen manifested in the church, amen. Praise God, um, hallelujah. So um, I'll end here, right? Praise God. Let's 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 close this service. Let's close this time with prayer, right? Amen. And um, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for. Your son, we thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you, He is the head of the, the universal church. And we thank you, He is head over GU. We are the body of Christ. And uh, so, as the head is blessed, we are blessed. As the head is healthy, we are healthy. Thank you so much for what He has done for us. Father God, help us not to make our own plans, make, help, us to make, help us not to do, go our own directions, but help us to focus on Him and Him alone. So, we give you. Uh, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. So if you're watching this, if you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, I want to give you, give you this opportunity to receive Him. But the Bible says if anyone has Christ, right? if anyone has a son, he has life. He who does not have the son does not have life. So how do you have life? By receiving Jesus. Amen. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you. Come into my life. I believe you went to the cross for me. You died for me. And because you die, I can live. I receive you today. I believe I receive you today as my Savior and my Lord. Hallelujah. Come into my life. Save me. Change me. Help me to live your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's close this service. Jesus.
your love is kind. you father praise you so by the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of the father and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with you throughout this week it's going to be a good week a blessed week an exciting week hallelujah the lord's going to make you a blessed to be a blessing in jesus name we pray amen amen <laughs>